Hi everyone. Uh, our next talk is Skip Tracing for Fun and Profit by Red Greenhagen. So let's welcome him. So like she said, my name is Red Greenhagen. If you're in the wrong track, you should still stay. If you've never heard, if you've never heard a gay autistic dude from Oklahoma crack jokes, I'm pretty fucking funny. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. So uh, my talk is Skip Tracing for Fun and Profit, How to Hide from the FBI uh, for the Recon Village. First time I gave this talk, it was at DC 405 in Oklahoma City. Um, it ended with, because we were giving the talk at IHOP, right? And uh, my best friend at the time, let's rewind just for a second. We're giving the talk at IHOP, and I start, and the waitress walks in. She sees How to Hide from the FBI at the very, at the very front. She starts flipping the shit out. County sheriffs, Oklahoma, Oklahoma Highway Patrol, uh, Oklahoma City Police, right? So they all arrive, and we're all getting patted down for weapons because it's Oklahoma, we all have concealed carry, right? Come to find out, my, my friend had assault weapons, suppressors, all the kind of illegal shit that you don't want to have in a vehicle when the sheriffs come, right? So he got labeled as a domestic terrorist, all, all, all that good shit. So... To bypass that shit, we're going to do some legal stuff. Let me just read through this shit just for a second. If you have a TSSCI HCS clearance, you're going to want to be aware that the tools and techniques session has been covered in certain training materials provided in my past companies uh, with inside the intelligence community, but this has been reworked to be able to be given in a public setting. If you can be, it, it can all be recreated using open source information, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Working in future recovery for different state, local, and federal agencies, different types of legal application processes such as warrants were arranged through state attorneys and such, or whomever was the governing authority at the time. Just so you know, I have no idea what any of this shit means. <laughs> the cases covered in the talk were completed before working for my current employer. No state, local, federal, and or international laws were broken at this time. <laughs> Uh, the, trace, the trace was being located, investigated, all, although the laws change all the time. Please check with your SSO and FSO for details. Although my current work involves some sorts of social media exploitation, intelligent analysis, counterintelligence, and other forms of infiltration, my work with Macaque Advanced Programs Groups is that of the most ethical and legal standards. If anyone has any legal questions, please contact my attorney, Ryan Gillette. Uh, I can give you details. Just kidding, I just made that name up out of nowhere. <laughs> So this is my agenda. No one gives a shit about that, so we're just going to bypass that for a second. This is what skip tracing is. Skip tracing is taking all this information and making a huge, huge compilation of data, right? From there, you're going to start confirming where the whereabouts, do data obfuscation, looking for misinformation and things like that. The end goal from this is taking all that shit on the left and getting real-time location, all right? Easy piece of stuff. So... Something I'm going to talk about is pivots. Um, pivoting, pivoting information. Stop laughing. I've got, I'm making a point. Pit, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just fucking with you. Uh, pivoting, pivoting information for intelligence analysis is taking one piece of unique information and be able to pivot to get another piece of information. Say, for example, Red Greenhagen, you're going to get badass under there. And then from badass, you're going to be able to find all other kinds of things, like guns and you know what I mean? So for a good example, actually, no, shit, I'm sorry, I forgot. What are some good pivots from this? Please. Graveyard. I'm sorry? Graveyard. Username. The picture. 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 Who said picture? Awesome. Go say miss you? No, no, no. Anything else? <laughs> Woman. What else? <laughs> <laughs> yes. The, the, the time frame. Time frame is huge. And location. The ge geopolitical locations are huge in analysis. What else? All right. We're going to skip through this. So reverse Google search in the avatar, find unique matches. This is one of the, one of the ways how um, stupid fucking idiots get caught. It's hilarious. These anonymous wannabes that don't even know how to install IRC, they have to actually do the IRC web client. It's fucking hilarious. They go and create some random avatar with their initials. It's just fucking tool bags. Unique names are also pivotal in researches. So the thing about Ukraine and Trisha is the region, the region of Pakistan it comes from, the, the KIS tells me that his family or his family member's ancestry comes from either Eastern Europe or some, some form of uh, Eastern Europe or Middle Eastern descent, right? Also, key phrases and questions can be searched to cross-reference. The, for example, where's the FBI's, where's the perfect place to hide the, 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 the nouns he uses? 
the, uh, how he's using FBI in all copy letters and the slashes, as stupid as that sounds, how he put them in order, FBI, CI, NSA. And the way in the, how, the, how he uses pronouns in the sentence. That is an awesome piece of information. Say if I'm using that to do machine learning in IRC channels and other pivotal information, I can gather a shit ton of more data. It might not be accurate, it's more percentage based at that point. And another thing is the, like he said, the uh, Pakistan 10 years ago. Why did he say 10 years ago? Why not five years ago? Not, not, why not two years ago? Why not my mom's, my mom's house? Why Pakistan? And again, the one month ago. It means it was posted one month ago. Why one month ago? And what does he, what does he post, post past since? So if you're creating a timeline of his posts, so say, for example, fuck, 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 fuck. How to hide, where would I hide from the FBI if I did this? Oh, and another month later he posts, why would I do this? And et cetera, et cetera. Building a timeline of information like this is, is, is amazing. So about me, um, this is the place where I come from. My first job and a bunch of other random stuff. Uh, I currently work for McAfee Security Advanced Programs Group as a senior threat and malware researcher. Uh, my entire career has come from the U.S. intelligence community. Um, I've never really had a job in the private sector because I got fired. So this is why, this is my why you don't let Marines create your slide deck. I have no idea what some of these things means. You stab bigger tits than most women. You did not put that. Humble eats a rocket. No, I got that one. But this is, this, is, this is why you don't let Marines create your slide deck. So, um, talking about myself for a second, because I love talking about myself. Just kidding. Um, I was diagnosed with Asperger's um, at le age 11. Um, didn't really fit into school. Didn't really understand things. Um, my mom actually came home with a computer one day, and best thing ever happened to me. Taught myself C, taught myself all kinds of things within a certain amount of time frame. Not having Asperger's in a very, very small town, like living on a dirt road, and like your graduating class from high school being like four, you don't really get that much information, right? So if you don't know what autism is or Asperger's, I got some examples for you. So this is what my mom thinks are people with Asperger's. This is what I think someone with Asperger's is like. <laughs> and if you're a Democrat, this is what you think Asperger's looks like. <laughs> so um, my brother's actually the one who got me started in this. Um, I was 14 years old. Um, he was working with, uh, with, uh, with uh, U.S. Marshals for, uh, for fugitive recovery. Um, one day, he came to me, and this is after I got in trouble with law enforcement. He said, help me find this chick. I said, no, that's okay. So he gave, me, he gave me some cash, and he went and bought me a video game. I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> took, me, took me 30 minutes, right? I, I thought, I thought, there's no way I'm going to find this chick. There's no way. There's absolutely no way. So I started thinking, if I was a white piece of trash and only had $400, and I had to go from location A to location B, which was, it was actually pretty far, and get a hotel room, knowing she was trying to get away from the U.S. Marshals in the city she was, re I, I was thinking, this bitch has got to, she got to get out of the state, right? So I start calling, so I do a Google map, right? And in the API, I start filtering by cheap hotels along the route from location A to location B. I swear to God, in my mother's life, the first hotel I called, she was there. Um... So I, so I called, and they transferred me to the room, and the, and, the, and the phone rang. And they picked up the phone. I fucking hung it up. I had no idea what I was doing. Like, this is, this, this is, this is. And I called my brother, and I said, oh, hey, by the way, she's there. She said, how'd you know? Oh, I called her. You did what? <laughs> so my brother at the time was living, was living a long, long, long ways away. But I was actually living in the city where she was. So, I, so we went there, and there she is. I couldn't believe it. I was like... Lady, you are so fucking stupid. Um, so this is about what I do now. I currently work with uh, three Marines that have black faces. And, no, I'm kidding. Um, no, uh, my current team is, uh, was comprised of three Marines, uh, myself and uh, Dave Marcus from McAfee and Advanced Programs Groups. The Marines have multiple combat tours. They all came from a background of intelligence, uh, capture kill missions, special forces. Um, the multiple agencies that uh, we work with all together, uh, like the Joint, Joint Intelligence Directive, uh, INSCOM, which is Information Security Man, Command, First IO, uh, Special Operations Command, FBI, NSA, DIA. So this is actually where we currently work out. Uh, so this is the, the Special Operations mythology that's currently used. Um, it talks about like 
So if you talk about special operations stuff on the side, things like negotiating settlements, um, larger and, minor, larger and min minor military conflicts, right? Um, and the things underneath is like propaganda, uh, subversion. So the things where APG operates at is on the, in the red. Infiltrating of foreign hacking groups based on, the, based on the malicious code. So we profile foreign computer hackers based on the malicious code. We uh, infiltrate those groups, um, build psychological profiles, um, do all kinds of interesting things. So I'm going to try and go through this uh, tools and techniques part. Um, one, of, one of my most popular, my favorite tools is Maltigo. Um, Maltigo allows me, with different APIs, uh, to import information and share with my team. Uh, case file is actually another tool upside of Maltigo that allows me to work on a, on, a, on a nice canvas and be able to share things with other members of my team. And they can, they can see my notes, I can see their notes, right? Um, cool thing about this is I can input from multiple sources. Multiple sources. I think the last time I checked was 128. 120, under 200, over 100. All right. Another amazing tool is Palantir. Palantir is an amazing tool. Um, I actually use it for counterintelligence investigations for, uh, for, uh, for uh, intelligence agencies. Um, I remember one case I was using Palantir. And our end goal was to find the person or persons that was leaking the material from the agency. I requested everything. I requested a DLP logs, I requested batch access logs, I requested CAC logs. I swear to God, I swear to God, I requested receipts in digital format from the restaurant within the federal agency, right? Every single unique piece of information, Palantir ingested it and created a timeline of when the information could have been accessed, the chances and percentage of the person who could have taken it, and then spits out one name. Palantir is an amazing, amazing tool if you have money. NetGlove is a very, very, very underlooked tool set. Palantir, not, not Palantir, I'm sorry, NetGlove. NetGlove is one of my favorite tools. Absolutely one of my favorite tools. Its own engine, be able to make modification, be able to build other tools. This is, this is my bread and butter. From that, we got Python, because you have so much information you need, to, you need to automate, right? From Python, you got the Google Maps API, we'll talk about more later. Uh, the Social Engineer Toolkit for mostly exploitation, um, cloning of websites, sending fake SMS messages, shit like that. Um, Mike Mazzelli's website is phenomenal. F absolutely phenomenal. His tools and techniques um, on the site, specifically on like, the custom tools, they're so amazing. It, I can't explain in words how amazing it is. I think altogether he has about 1,000, 2,000 tools. Like, like if I put an email address in the toolkit and I take the search, it's going to come back with a profile. Phone number does the forget password, comes back with a picture. It's, it's absolutely amazing. I can't say any better things about it. Um, tools and techniques, the Google Alerts. Um, a lot of APT groups and crimeware groups will use Google Alerts for like hashes, hashes, uh, call saying things like or real names. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of the groups outside of advanced percentage threat actors will have they're like, they're hashes of their new exploit kits or malware and they're putting on Google Alert. Because they want to know if someone's searching for, their, for, searching for that hash. They want to know if... Oh my God. Handles. Uh, unique unique uh, API calls, anything, anything. Google Alerts is amazing, right? And footprinting Google Alerts to see that the new hashes they're putting up is also a very, very awesome technique. So these are the some cases that I liked. Um, I put two on here. Um, so the first one. So <laughs> this guy. Uh, so, I, so what I first started with was I had... His real name, his criminal history, all the other things that came up with this case, right? So from the real name and I believe his phone number, I came along with uh, jkeating 31 yahoocom From the email address, I put in Maltigo. I'm sorry, actually not Maltigo. I put it in, uh, in uh, uh, actually no, it is Maltigo. I apologize. From that, I see his Steam profile, which is an online gaming. From the Steam profile, Steam profile and the merging of the phone number gives me five contacts that I never knew about. So that has additional five contacts that I can use. Come to find out, he's playing, I take his Steam profile along with the numbers and I see his friends, right? So I use his Steam ID and look, look, look up a Steam ID. From his Steam ID, I find out he's playing Guild Wars 2. From Guild Wars 2, I find the server he plays on along with the people he plays on. And I find the guild he plays with. Come to find out, they're looking for a healer. I don't know what the fuck a healer is. I've never played MMORG in my life. 
Real men play Counter-Strike Source. I don't care what you have to say. <laughs> so from there, I bought a character that was a healer. And went, well, I think I watched like maybe a one or two YouTube videos trying to figure out how to play a healer. And I teleported to him in-game. So from that, so from that, I'm like, yo, guys, what's going on? You need a healer? I swear to God, I was the best healer in that game. I swear to God. Guys were like, dude, you've got 112 hours? I was like, I've just bought this fucking account. Are you guys really that fucking stupid? I'm literally right-clicking, one, two. Right-clicking, one, two. Fucking idiots, dude. So, so the warrant falls under his name, right? He's, he's dumb enough to host a fucking Ventrilo server from his own computer. That means I own him. So um, I couldn't get access uh, multiple times to, to the Ventrilo, so I wrote an exploit to actually uh, denial of service to the Ventrilo server, which was a remote procedural call to the actual web client. So taking that down, and this was actually planned, and you have to keep in mind there's a lot of things I'm taking out of my slides for, for OPSEC reasons, but from that, I invited them all to a Steam call because I knew if I did a Steam call, I can get their IP addresses. So from a Steam call, I used set plus the Google API to create a phishing link, which I had already planned to get all their IPs of the people and the members in the channel, right? So from that, I, do, uh, I, also do a I also do Wireshark to be able to capture the IPs when Steam chat. I'm not Steam, I'm sorry, Steam voice, I apologize. This is back before it was patched. So one IP address was actually in Lawton, Oklahoma. From there, I do a master merge, which is actually a, it's, it's a, it's a Python script to merge all the information I currently have to try and filter through Facebook, cell phone records, things like that, to be able to get this one IP. From there, I find a Facebook friend of his also lives in Lawton, Oklahoma. From there, the guy has a phone number literally posted on his, on his, on his Facebook profile. So from there... I use set to send him a text message saying, yo, dude, what's cracking? Are we still up for night? So when, you got to think about it like this. If they're living together and he gets a weird text message from the guy's phone number that doesn't really match up, you know what I mean? He's going to think, that doesn't, that, doesn't, that doesn't add up. So whenever you're doing something like this, and I'm not a legal authority, please keep in mind, it needs to, it needs to match as possible to the type of conversation that we would have. Whenever you don't have things like, so there's some things I didn't have, like I didn't have access to his email yet, I didn't have access to his Facebook private messages yet. So you've got to make it as bland as possible. So I think I said like, uh, um, are we still on the, or, no, I, I said something like, uh, hey, what's up? And he responded. Um, and I think the conversation went like uh, something like, uh, um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still home. Are you, are you coming home tonight? Something like that. So I knew they were living together. So from that, um, there's the message I sent, and I got the physical address, and there's the news article of him being arrested. Um, the, uh, the tactical team um, requires, specifically state, federal, state agencies, require two unique pieces of information to be able to verify the location of the target. So if you just say, oh, hey, I got this dude's IP address from, from Wireshark, or, or, and they're going to be like, okay, we need another piece. Does that make sense? So at least two. So these are the possible counters he could have done, um, other than being completely stupid. I swear to God, in Ventrilo, he was talking to people about how he was on the run. I swear to God. He was like, yo, dude. Yo, dude, I'm on the run. I'm, I'm, I'm a felon. I'm, I'm on the run. I'm so smart. And the thing is, whenever you're doing stuff like this, you've got to record everything. You have to record everything. Everything you do is recorded. And I'm talking about on my end, whenever you're doing a skip page, right? And some of the conversations, dude, I swear to God, he was a walking meme. Um... One of the biggest things on here is, uh, uh, where's that? Um, completely removed all social media accounts. He had multiple social media accounts. That's why I made it so easy, putting a lot of stuff to Palantir and spitting out uh, names and phone numbers. So another case. Um, you might not agree with what I do for work. You might not agree with the tools and techniques that I use. But let's, let's, let's use an analogy. Um, I respect Chinese actors. I respect... I respect I respect hackers, all right? I respect the guys that I go after, right? I think it was Abraham Lincoln. I might be wrong, and please, God, forgive me if I'm wrong. The, the person who said one man's freedom fire is another person's terrorist, right? There's always, there's always good and evil on both sides. But if you can't agree with me that there is absolute evil in this world, you are fucking ignorant. There is absolute evil in this world. This guy, um, let me get a drink.
this piece of shit. <laughs> oh, no, no, wait before you start laughing. He is, he, he is at home. He meets this chick on a, on, on, on a dating app, right? She has a kid. They move in together along with the kid. They were, to, they were, they were living in the house for about a nine-month time period. He was molesting her child for four months. And by, by molest, I mean the absolute most horrific things you could possibly imagine. Whenever, whenever the boy went and told his mom, he killed him. In the most inhumane way you could possibly imagine. There is absolute evil in this world. So I started with this on full information, social address, phone number, plus some pretexting, because the investigators that already did the work gave, me, gave our team the case files of the people who, they, who was interviewed, people known, known LSEs, things like that, right? So taking that, um, this, was the first, this was the first graph with uh, Google accounts, form accounts, and a bunch of disinformation. From that, I go into Palantir, and I see his burners that are still associated with his account right here, right? And then the two computers, which actually this is inaccurate because the two computers were actually one. He was just trying to change his MAC address, so that, a little bit of that's inaccurate. So I used master merge with all, with all the information that I had to try and combine it into one and narrow it down. He had a ridiculous amount of misinformation. Ridiculous. He was telling people, actually, it's on my next fucking slide. He was telling coworkers, the, the chick he was banging, he was talking to uh, random people, neighbors, uh, past employers. He was telling everyone something different. I mean, one, one was talking about how he went to Missouri. He actually went to Missouri, took pictures, and that's, that's a, that was like, that's a six, seven hour drive, just to do misinformation. He uh, registered fake, ah, no one cares about that. The Ontario stuff, he was setting up VPNs on Gmail addresses every time making sure it came from Ontario. Using a VPN server that didn't actually look like a VPN, so whenever I DRC it, or NS, I, it would look like it was a legitimate computer. He was paying people in Kansas money to lie, right? So actually, I learned a lot about. I actually learned a lot about myself in this case. It's not. I'm not, I'm not an egotistical person, but it. You start to think. You start to think. People don't know there's people like me doing these type of things. Does, does, that, does that make sense? And the amount of information, it, it was it was unreal. It was unreal. I've never. I so. I think I've done maybe, maybe around 200 cases altogether of things like this. I've never seen the amount of, I mean, I, I guarantee you, 200, 200, 250 fake social media accounts, like actually legitimate setup, phone numbers, everything. So uh, I found his, I found his uh, Gmail address, um, game, game controller his Gmail address, and one of the things he was checking was actually looking at the last known IP address, so I actually had to match it, right? So from there, I go to uh, take out to google.com and download all the stuff. From there, so if you're not familiar with Google, I'll take out the com, you can actually download all your information. The things I'm looking at is location history, his Google searches, and his Google voice, right? Location history, if you got your phone in your pocket, it's, it's, it's recording your walking, it's recording your, your driving, it's recording your bus, you know, you know what I mean? His Google searches, every Google search history that, well, I'm sorry, not every search Google history, I apologize, but his Google search history as a time, right? From there, I narrowed it down to eight contacts, a location history which he has saved on his phone and his Google searches. From this, it was very apparent that he was needing money bad. And I mean a lot of money. So the address, come to find out, this is where he was living, and the contact phone numbers in the Albany, New York, and recruiters, random associations. He's trying to find a job, trying to, trying to speak to recruiters. He did a lot of Google searches like on uh, Monster Chemical Engineering, Monster uh, Job. He's looking for money bad. Like he's spending his entire day not just looking for work, right? So from there, I do a master merge, and then I find his resume that he's using on monster.com. From his, from his resume, I find out what kind of job he's looking for, so I use, I use SET to clone a website that was, uh, it's popular, I think it was in like Europe or something like that, but I changed some of the phone numbers, I changed some of the things on the website. So from there, I went and created a monster profile. Actually, I didn't change that slide. I apologize. Um, some of the things on that slide um, talks about the... Uh, I forgot to edit it. I apologize. 
Um, some of the things on the slide talks about uh, how you want the information to match the resume as closely as, as, as much as possible, but not be like, oh, this is too good to be true. Um, a lot of things talking about working in a small team environment, people that are on the run do not want to work on a large team. The more people you talk to, the more chances you have of getting caught, right? Um, so from there, um, I post... I post the, uh, post the monster article within a certain amount of hours. I think it was six, five or six hours. Get a response back. So get a response back. I sent him a response back with a malicious PDF. It was talking about things like uh, um, th what, what the job posting is like, um, things, things that we were looking for, right? From that, I just verified his IP address. And we actually had to hire a voice actor um, in the bottom right corner. The voice actor acts as a go-between to where if they start calling, if he starts calling the number to, to act, act like, hey, I want this job, I need more information, they have a script that they follow to try and set it up. Because voice actors, I mean, I'm not a voice actor. I mean, I, have, I might have a sexy voice, but that's as close as I'm going to get. <laughs> so uh, the thing, so what I won't discuss is why the, uh, why the apprehension team would not go to the house. I, I can't discuss that, I apologize. But they wanted to set it up to where he would go to this location, right? So we have the voice actor tell him to go meet at this location at this time and to wear nice clothes, like a legitimate interview. And uh, that's where, that's where uh, NYPD and the other uh, state, and the state law enforcement and uh, future recovery teams are actually waiting. So this is the actual, this is actual the time all together. Um, from the very first to the very end, this shows all the misinformation, the things that misled, right? It took a lot of time. One of the biggest things that happens whenever you're doing skip traces as a target is whenever you're working with um, specifically like local law enforcement or state law enforcement, they'll want you to turn it into crime stoppers, and then from crime stoppers they'll get the trip and then work together. That keeps it. That keeps the legal processing stuff just. It's it's more helpful to the tracer, right? Specifically the tra tracer on the team. Um, these are the possible counters. Um, I mean, these are pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, I mean, another good thing is whenever you actually see law enforcement is not to assault them and do stupid crap, right? Um, also, one of the biggest things whenever he was trying to apply for visas in other countries was he was actually using his real name. Whenever you have access, specifically to like, uh, like LexisNexis and other things, like, like those type of databases, you can see the failed attempts. Right? So that's another huge thing trying to find, trying to find someone. So this is actually my outro. Um, some things I would explain if you're, if you're planning on going on the run is to read uh, 100 Ways to Disappearently Free. It's a really, really great book. Uh, how to Steal a Job talks about how to act within an environment um, where you're on the run. And then special links to uh, uh, my parents. Uh, my parents actually um, helped me, help me actually be able to, what's the word, what's the word? operate within an environment, right? Um, Dave Marcus, Natalio, uh, Matt, Sean, Ann, Wally, uh, uh, Black Days, Irwin, Urch, members of Unallocated Space, which allowed me to work this talk out with them. Uh, Dan Borges and all, sh shut up. <laughs> and all the shit talkers who said it wasn't working. Any questions? Uh, so you said that APTs will tend to set up Google Alerts for the hashes for their malware. Like for like new exploit kits, new malware samples, things like that. So where to see if they come up in new Intel reports or say, or like virus toll comes up and says, oh, hey, there's this. Right. Things like that. Uh, So for, for, so for like a private citizen, you'd want to do something like your social security number, your phone number, your real name, right? Um, um, unique piece of information like that. And you also, you want to tie it to more than just one. So say, for example, if you do like your social and your name, you're going to get a better percentage hit if you were just doing a social, right? right? So I was thinking, like, if you were Google, would it make sense to, this is sort of off topic. Oh, did you're good. See, yeah, 
I'm, I'm not going to talk on that subject because that's a TTP, but that's a very, very good line of thinking. Questions? I love questions. Come on. You can ask me where I got the shirt. Sir? Uh, so all that stuff was covered in the in the very first slide. Uh, you have to understand. Um, I'm trying to think how to word this. It takes whenever we do things through legal channels, it takes a great amount of time. So I'm still planning on what to do once the information comes back. So like now, um, we're doing doing the uh, warrant for information goes through Google and they'll send us whatever things we need. Does that make sense? But these cases these cases happened several years ago. Sir. I'm sorry? All the tools you talked about with the exception of Palantir, are they open source and free? Yeah. Yeah. Questions? Sir? Oh, thanks, sir. You're not bad looking yourself. Shut up, I was cracking a joke. So, I hate to be disrespectful. I, I mean, I love giving talks, right? Um, there are some things that I can't say, but can you re-ask the question in a way if you were on a team, how to manage legends? I don't drink alcohol. But if you re-ask the question, I'm, 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 I'm being serious. If you re-ask the question, uh, how to manage legends within an environment, I'll be more than happy to answer the question. I'll, I'll, answer, I'll ask a question for you. <laughs> if you had multiple legends and you were working in a team environment, how would you do it? Dude, no fucking problem. I have no problem answering that question. So one of the, so one of the biggest things, specifically in like the uh, CTA 5 from DI Mythology, is you have, say if I die, someone needs to be able to pick up that work and carry on. So our legend will comp compromise of the type of no nouns, pronouns we work with, like full chat logs to ha see how I talk, like the type of words I use. Um, like the type of lies that I say, uh, the, the, the VPN address that I use, right? And so where that legend can go from look, person A to person B and they can continue, continue the mission. Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome. Good fucking job, dude. <laughs> Question, sir. <laughs> so I have coworkers in the room, so I can't lie. But I have a shit ton. It's embarrassing. Um, no, like uh, I have the, the uh, Dale uh, four split, right, on both sides. Because I do a lot of, I do a lot of uh, 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 Linux work. And then I have got, I've got a shit ton of monitors. It's fucking embarrassing. <laughs> Sir. You mentioned that the bad guys relatively don't realize that there are you uh, that exist out there to create something more, right? Yes. Um, do I have time still? Um, when I was younger, I didn't know what skip tracing was. I had no fucking clue what skip tracing was. I read an article uh, on Wired Magazine by Michelle Gomez. Uh, OG gangsta. Like, old school hacker type, but she didn't know she was a hacker. I hate to say this, and oh my god, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I heard a quote a long time ago from Jason Street. He said... Some of the best hackers in the world don't own computers. I thought I was just full of shit. I never really, I never really cared. I was like, it's, it's Jason. I'm just kidding. And I was thinking, holy shit, he's right. Some of the best hackers in the world are not technical. Don't own computers. They don't. They do machine sculpting. They do fuck. I don't know. Just I'm going to bullshit something. I don't fucking know. But I see how she worked, and I see how she's actually supposed to be my guest. Uh, she actually wasn't able to make it. Um, I see how she worked, and I see how I work, and I see how I come from a hacker background, and I want to do something good for my country. You know what I mean? I want to do something good for, I want to serve my country. I see how she did it, and she's the exact same way she went, just, she just had different routes. Like, she knows how to find boats, she knows how to do, like, uh, huge tankers that are being stolen, right? It's, it's a very niche thing, 
but this work helps me do more intelligent analysis to track other, it's, it's pretty much the same, same thing. Did I answer your question? Because I kind of rambled. Uh, Um, so through all the work from, from law enforcement that I worked with, um, I think I met two or three actual hackers. Um, a lot of them are like uh, former military that know how to use database searches and they have the analytical thinking. Um, but they don't know how to do things like getting an Xbox Live IP address, getting things like the technical side of it. Does that make sense? Did I actually answer that time? Dude, I apologize, my mind's racing. <laughs> Sir. If you'll give me your phone number. <laughs> um, yes, yes. Um, uh, three cases altogether. Uh, two of them killed themselves. And uh, one, it wasn't that... Uh, I'm trying to think how to word this. I'm trying to say legal. I sincerely apologize. There's a list of things I can and cannot say, and there's like only four things I'm supposed to be saying. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't the fact that I couldn't find him, it was the fact that we couldn't legally apprehend him. Does that make sense? Like, like, everything I do is on a team environment, I swear to God, for every hacker on our team, there's four fucking attorneys. You know what I mean? And sometimes, it comes to an art of, the attorneys are saying, no, it's gonna break international law. Even, even if they send me to like Galapagos Islands to where I can do most of my work to be able to, to, be able to stay legal, sometimes, like most international law is not written, right? It's always been, dude, I'm sorry, my, one of the big, biggest things in intelligence is doing your, doing your steps. What you did to start with and where you went and whatever, as long as, even if I don't find them and I can give them on to someone else, they can match it and carry on the mission. But sometimes you just can't break the law. And the law is so particular about one certain area, specifically like on passports and from foreign countries, that sometimes you just have to say, this is where, I know this is where his last known location was, and there's nothing else I can do. And it sucks. It sucks. Thank you, sir. Nothing, any other questions? Sir. Yes, yes. Oh, my, I'm sorry, my talk, actually, I was told I was given 30 minutes from 45 minutes. There was a, so I talk kind of fast. So I'm trying to figure out, like, when you went through, and after you start tracking at one, two, three, like, how did you gather all of that? So, gathered through mostly closed source sources, a lot of OSINT, a lot of other things, but what the master merge does for me is say, oh, the creation date of this Twitter account doesn't match the time of this Gmail. Okay. Or... This douchebag was here, but not here at this location. Or his passport entered this country at this time, but didn't. So it's really good for finding misinformation. Yeah? Questions? Ma'am? One question. I'm just fucking with you. As silly as it sounds, and I, I hate to play the autism card, but I am very bad at putting things down. I am very, very, very bad at putting things down. Like uh, the uh, the uh, uh, Hoover, the second case. Um, oh, I wanted I wanted to fucking destroy his life. That was actually the last case where the agency would tell me the story because we learned our lesson. Because Rhett is emotionally retarded. All right, it's very hard for me to put things down. And I was, that's one of the reasons why I spent 510 hours on that one case, right? It's, um, one, of the, one of the rules that I'm trying to follow now is if I find three unique pieces of information that don't tie together to two informations I have confirmed, I say, okay, done. I, I record it, I say, here it is, Marines, and you know what I mean? What was your second question? I sincerely apologize, but I won't answer that question. I apologize. Questions? Hey, Sir. Sort of 
Um, to be absolutely honest, we don't know how to answer that question. Um, my best friend um, actually has an OSCP and OSCE. Extremely intelligent, extremely intelligent. Love the guy to death. But he's, I see how he can take a pen test mindset and be able to go into an intelligence, life, uh, intelligence uh, field, right? If you have the hacker mindset, you've got the fucking hacker mindset. You know what I mean? It's, it's an experience thing that comes with time. You know what I mean? It's not about, it's like, it's like trying to study for the OSCE. You can't study for the OSCE. It's an, it's, it's an experience thing. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, like, like I said, um, I'd go docs, dudes, and anonymous. I think they're hot shit. No, I'm, I'm being serious. That's actually one of the first things I started doing. Um, I can't stand people who go after private citizens. I can't fucking stand them. You don't call yourself a hacker and go after people who can't defend themselves. Like older couples, um, there, was a, there was a dude that was living with his, with his parents because his, his credit was shot. Because he went to, In my own personal opinion, not speaking for my employer, hackers who call themselves hackers and target personal lives to ruin them just for money, you can get the fuck out of here. And that's my own personal opinion. To me, that's not a hacker. A hacker is someone who strives for knowledge, tries to, uh, do. I'm rambling, I apologize. But, uh, no, seriously. Uh, some, some, there's, there's people out there, there's groups out there, and I'd start just going through, I'd learn what doxing's all about. Um, difference between illegal doxing and legal doxing. You know what I mean? And keep it to yourself, and just practice. Uh, that's actually one of the, uh, my niece, actually, and I'm actually not rambling, I'm actually on, on topic now. Um, my niece, um, had some things happen. I love my niece to death. Absolutely love her to death. She's a pain in my ass, but I fucking love her. Um, she, had, she had some bad things happen. And this guy, actually from, from, from Tulsa, Oklahoma, a hacker, which didn't even know, what, didn't even know how to spot, spell Python, um, was just fucking with her. I couldn't believe it. Like, I go read this guy's Twitter and his Facebook. He's talking about how he's dropping O'Day and got all these CVEs. I'm like, dude, you're a fucking tool bag. You're a fucking tool bag. You're using, you're using whitepeople.com, not whitepeople.com. Uh, the, 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 the fucking the white, the white pages.com, right? And I'm thinking, man, I'm done. I'm fucking done. I need a Xanax. Just give me a second. Go say, monsieur. Good. Absolutely. Uh, trails, Absolutely. Um, I sincerely apologize, but I can't answer that question. I, I sincerely apologize. I would love to. I would absolutely love to. But I apologize. Find me outside. <laughs> I'm sorry? All right. Thanks, sir. Yep.